Apple's M4 MacBook Air has been destroying every single Windows laptop we put it up against, including the Lunar Lake and Snapdragon laptops. So here is the new Dell Plus with an AMD chip. This thing starts at $850 base price, which perfectly matches the $850 M4 MacBook Air on Amazon right now, link below. Except that this starts with a Ryzen 5. I actually upgraded it to a Ryzen 7 because we know the five would be two weeks. So it's actually $950, but it does have a 512 gig SSD, double of what you get in the base MacBook Air. So with that said, let's compare everything about these, including the designs, the displays, the battery life, which right now you see I'm at 100%. So let me unplug both charging cables just like that. I'm gonna max out the brightness, which obviously you can see the MacBook Air is so much brighter. I don't know why this thing is so dim. Plus the resolution is lower. But the one thing I'm most curious about is the performance, which we're gonna do a ton of performance tests. So let's jump right into this video. Now the nice thing about the Dell Plus is that you do get more ports. You have two USB-Cs, you have an HDMI and a USB-A on the other side, while the MacBook Air has the Max A3 for charging, two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. So better ports on the Dell Plus. This thing's also a two-in-one, so you could basically fold it flat like this or fold it all the way around and use it like a tablet with this pen. They both have fingerprint sensors for authentication. The keyboard, personally, I like better on the MacBook Air as well as the Force Touch trackpad. This has a diving board trackpad, so a lot worse. A lot of flex in here too. I mean, Apple definitely wins in terms of build quality and design. And don't forget that the MacBook Air is also a lot thinner. And now with that out of the way, let's jump into performance. We've got a bunch of different tests we're gonna do, starting with Geekbench 6. But one thing I'm hearing right now is the fans are literally running on this laptop and I haven't even done anything which of course the MacBook Air is fanless, but let's jump right into it. We have 16 gigs of RAM on both of these. We have the Ryzen AI7 350 with the Radeon 860M. That's a pretty nice AMD chip compared to the M4. Let's run the CPU benchmark. We got our scores and oh man, that's bad. That's embarrassingly bad. All right, the MacBook Air 3700, that's about 41% higher single core compared to this AMD Ryzen AI7 and then 57% higher multi-core on the MacBook Air. Why in the world? This is almost 15,000 versus 9,400. That is really, really bad. Now I have Speedometer 3.1, which is basically a browser benchmark test, kind of how snappy your web browsing experience is gonna be. And here we go, we have 65% faster web browsing performance on the M4 MacBook Air versus this AMD chip. And now let's move on to web design performance using Figma. This is kind of like a web browser performance benchmark. Right here we have a project from our partner, uh, 500 Studios, one of the best studios out in California. And what I'm gonna do is an export test where I've grabbed these 12 layers and I'm gonna export each one to see the speed. All right, the AMD Dell Plus just finished a minute and 58 seconds, a minute and 31 seconds, so about 27 seconds faster on the MacBook Air. And in case you're complaining, saying I didn't turn off all the power settings and whatever, I just opened up Dell Optimizer and it here it shows that I have been on ultra performance mode the entire time, so we are getting the best battery performance that we can get right now. So we have 3D Mark opened up right here. Let's test out some graphics performance. Here we have Steel Nomad Lite, which is the most recent kind of AAA gaming test. Oh, that's bad. <coughs> oh my goodness, 8.6 FPS on this AMD Ryzen AI7 chip with the A60M graphics, compared to 24.1 FPS on the M4 MacBook Air fanless. That's 2.8 times faster, almost three times faster graphics performance in that test. And now let's jump into Cinebench 2024. We're gonna be doing a 10 minute multi-core CPU stress test. So let me go ahead and start it up and we'll see how much we get. All right, it's been a while guys. I've been waiting so long on this laptop. It actually took so long that it had to reset again so I'm waiting even longer for this stress test to finish. All right, finally it's done. That took forever. We have 585 points on the AMD Dell Plus 
872 on the M4 MacBook Air. That's 49% faster. And this thing is fanless. Come on. Now let's move on to 3D video rendering with Blender. This is the Blender Party Tug project. And right here, I keep trying to turn on GPU compute, but it keeps saying out of memory in HIP and nothing is working. I'm going to preferences. If I hit none, it uses the CPU. CUDA is not supported. OptiX is not supported. One API is not supported. HIP is. And I've been trying every single option, trying to get it to use the GPU. And every time I try to render this image out of memory, I don't get it. And now I've finally gotten it to work. It says eight minutes basically remaining, but it's using 100% of the CPU. None of this makes sense. I don't get why it can't use the GPU for rendering. This is absolutely ridiculous. So I'll let that run and let's test it on the MacBook Air and we'll see the difference. By the way, guys, while this is running, I want to show you something. I was wondering why this display on the Dell Plus is so dim. Well, I looked it up officially. The 2025 Dell 14 Plus 2-in-1 has a display brightness of 300 nits. This is one of the dimmest displays that I have seen in years. It's so dim. The MacBook Air, 600 nits. And I've been running both of these maxed out. Yes, maxed out 600 nits the whole time. We'll see what the battery life is like because so far, this thing is just underperforming with the higher end AMD chip option, the Ryzen 7 350. And the display is dimmer. And guess what? The resolution is also lower. This has 1920 by 1200 resolution compared to 2560 by 1664 on the MacBook Air. Believe it or not, the MacBook Air has 85% more pixels to run, which uses that much more battery, plus double the brightness, plus better performance. We're gonna see what that battery life is like in just a minute. All right, we are Finally done, seven minutes and 28 seconds CPU rendering on the Dell Plus because every single option for GPU did not work whatsoever. It had no memory apparently. And then a minute and 48 seconds on the M4 MacBook Air. This thing took four times longer than the MacBook Air. Of course, we had to complete this task for our battery life test to be fair. And now for the final performance test, let's do some photo editing in Lightroom Classic. I have 50 raw 42 megapixel photos right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of just switch through to see how snappy each one is. Just like that, switching between them. You could definitely see that sometimes they're nice and even, but you definitely can notice a delay about half the time on the Dell Plus. But I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the photos and I'm going to export. Let's match the settings on both of them, which means I'm gonna turn on sharpen screen standard. Everything else is the same and export. All right, there we go. And there you go, we are done. Not too bad, Dell Plus. The MacBook Air took 59 seconds to export those 50 photos, and the Dell Plus took a minute and 35, about 30 seconds longer, but not crazy bad like some of the other tests. Man, those fans are pretty loud and annoying. Keep in mind, fanless MacBook Air this entire time. So now, with all the performance testing out of the way, Let's get into the moment of truth, which is the battery life test. Keep in mind, 600 nits versus 300. Double the brightness for the entire time since we've been recording. 85% more pixels, so higher pixel density on this as well. And every single test destroyed the Dell Plus in terms of performance. So this thing better win in terms of the battery life because if it doesn't, this is just a slaughter fest. So there you go, we are at 50% battery life on the new 2025 Dell Plus with the AMD Ryzen AI7350 chip. That's been about, let's see, what was it like? An hour and a half? I think we started at 1.45 p.m. So we're getting pretty close 
so not quite two hours. And now the moment of truth on the M4 MacBook Air. 69%, look at that, 69% versus 50%. And this thing was faster in every test, double the brightness for the display, 85% more pixels. Basically, I, I can't even make sense of this. I mean, how? How was the battery life that bad? Less than two hours, 50% with worse performance by far. Super dim display that I've been struggling to see. I've been clicking the brightness up button the entire time because I think it should get brighter, but it doesn't. 300 nits, are you kidding me? In 2025, for a $950 laptop, is this a joke? I'm sorry, is this a joke? How could you have a 300 nit laptop? in 2025. This thing is $100 more expensive than the M4 MacBook Air on Amazon. It's been that way for like a month. It's been 850 bucks on Amazon. You could literally get it probably next day shipping. It doesn't make any sense. And we already tested the M4 MacBook Air versus Lunar Lake versus Snapdragon. It destroyed those in both performance and battery life. So I'd say if you're interested in getting the new Dell Plus, don't get the AMD chip. This has been a terrible experience all the way around. Get that Lunar Lake. I mean, it's just probably a little bit faster. The battery life is gonna be better, but still it can't compete with the M4 MacBook Air. This has just been a massive slaughter fest and it goes to show how crazy of a deal this is. This is like a lifetime, like best value laptop of all time deal for the M4 MacBook Air. I mean, it comes with 16 gigs of RAM, no more eight gig limitations. It's just absolutely mind blowing. So you guys let me know your thoughts on this comparison down in the comment section below. And go ahead and hit the button above to subscribe for more videos and check out some of the other comparisons that we've done right over there. This has been Vadim with Max Tech. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.